Brady, this is Trevor Sternad from the Black Dahlia Murder here, and you're listening to the Ever Black Podcast. Hey, human scum, this is odorous from Guam. We're going to battle Fear Factory. This is George Corps, Commander Fisher. This is Jasmine Delagrad. This is Wade from Our Last Enemy. This is Mike Nelson, Cool Star of Tennessee. He is at Wednesday 13. This is Bruce Andrew Rex from Kill Devil Hill. This is Gary Blue from Simple Tour, and you're listening to Ever Black Podcast. All right, before we go into this episode, we just need to give a shout out to our show supporters, the brutal occult clothing brand Electric Witch, who have amazing apparel from shirts to hoodies to hats to beanies and more. Check out their full range at electricwitch.com.au and put in the code EVERBLACK for 20% off your order. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review the EVERBLACK podcast through Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, and Facebook, and check out all our articles at everblackmedia.com. All right, on with the show. How you going, Selwyners? <laughs> hey, man. How are you doing, man? Yeah, good, good. So, uh, of course, man, thanks for joining us on the show. Uh, the new Insidious Disease album, After Death, comes out on October 30 through Nuclear Blast. And I've been cranking this thing over the last couple of weeks, and it's awesome, man. It's filled start to finish with tasty death metal goodness. Uh, I'm guessing it was written wow. before everything went crazy with COVID and stuff, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, we started writing uh, songs for this in 2011 already, uh, oh, wow. and we have like um, up until 2016, 17 when we started recording it uh, as an album. We we were like on and off writing back and forth a little bit here and there. So it's not like we have um, spent 10 years writing it, you know, but. Um, yeah, it's, it's good to finally have a release date for it. You know, it was originally supposed to get out uh, in May. But since everything happened, you know, everything got um, pushed back. So it's good to finally have a proper release date. It seems like everything's starting to very slowly uh, calm down a little bit, which means it's it's a good time to, to release music. Is it is it happening that way over there where you are now? Yeah, here in Norway, it's been um, uh, pretty much the same. You know, there's been some restrictions, but uh, that was like you know, some months ago. And uh, for me personally, it hasn't made that much of a difference. Apart from that, I've been restricted to travel, air travel whenever I want. And I don't like to be told what to do and what not to do, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, that's the only downside to it. But um, uh Apart from that, uh, my life has been pretty much normal. You know, I live in the countryside. Uh, and I work from home, you know, uh, and everything. So uh, there's only been less frequent trips to the grocery store to get um, beers, you know. <laughs> the important stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Same here. Same here. Well, apart from work. But uh, mm-hmm. do, you, do you and the other Insidious Disease boys live... In the in the same sort of area, I know Shane. Shane's, where, well, I, mean, I think he's still in England. Yeah, he lives in Birmingham. So, yeah. it's, um, uh, and my woman lives in Birmingham as well. So I'm I'm flying there quite often. Um, uh, then Tony lives in Florida, uh, and Mark lives in Berlin. So it's like we're all spread all over the place. But uh, helpfully with the internet and stuff, you know, things are a bit smoother and and um, it's been quite effortless to write this album especially since we haven't really had the deadline either you know and mm. obviously that can be a very positive thing but also a very negative thing because once you're done with the song or you think you're done with the song and you revisit it like one year later and then you want to change everything that's uh, that could be a pitfall you know but uh, luckily we've been pretty uh pretty strict about once we've done done the song or we feel we're done with the song we left it there and try not to listen to it too much because then stuff like that could easily happen that you want to change things around. When do you know when an album's done? Who puts the foot down and says it's done? Uh, well, obviously, it, it has <laughs> to um, go through the <laughs> recording process in, in, a, in a proper manner, you know, and uh, there's always bits and bobs that are being added or changed in the last minute, you know, in the, in the studio, you know, so... When we went to Russ Russell in um, in Kettering in England to uh, to mix and master it, there was like a few little overdubs of, of lead guitar here and there, maybe some vocal bits that got changed last minute and stuff like that, which is something you 
it's to be expected, you know. It's like you you prepare a proper meal and you're like, yeah, a little bit more salt on the potatoes or whatever, you know, stuff like that. So <laughs> nothing really big, but you have to be pre- prepared for for the last minute stuff. Always. Absolutely. And it came out awesome, man. Like, uh, I hope you guys are really proud of this album because it's, it's really, really fucking good. As I said, I've been cracking it. Thanks a lot, man. That, that means a lot. Cool. That, that's awesome to hear because uh, we've been living with these songs for for so many years already. So for us, it's kind of like old, but for everybody else, it's it's new, you know. And uh, um, we had probably like five, six more songs that we um, we could have had on, on the album instead of these. But we, we had at some point, as, as we talked about already, that you kind of have to set the foot down and start producing your yourself. And that's that's quite challenging sometimes because that means that you have to trim off the fat, you know, and which mm. basically trim off the ego because you want you want as much on an album as possible. But I think it's from my point of view, it, it's kind of pointless to have a, an album of this type of music uh, for more than forty two, forty three minutes, you know, or ten nine, ten songs because it's it's an uh, it's an onslaught of audio, and uh, you want the listener to hopefully listen to it again instead of having a 78 minute album you know that's right and uh well, as i said i've been cranking it man like uh I, i'm fortunate i can uh do my job my day job and uh listen in headphones so i had it on loop and i didn't get bored of it so that's a good really awesome. good sign that's, dude. Uh, <laughs> that's a great compliment thanks a lot man <laughs> oh it's just I, I just enjoyed it i thought it was really good cool so, yeah yeah i mean it's uh it's within Sydney's music it's it's not about reinventing anything it's about basically just finding a cool groove and and work songs around that you know and sometimes we do more uh fast stuff and then some so- slow stuff and mid paced stuff or you know it's just the way we approach this type of uh, of songwriting you know and uh it, it feels really cool to finally have this out, you know, and, and we've been, as I said, we've been living with the songs for a long time now, and the album has been finished for uh, for a couple of years already, so, um, but due to all these delays here and there, mm. and then what happened now with, with this virus bullshit, you know, it's like, yeah, you just have to sit back and like, well, we waited this long, we can, we might have waited another couple of months, you know, it doesn't make that much difference for us, but, um, yeah, it's good to finally have it out in in October. Well, I mean, this is of course album number two for you guys. Uh, your debut Shadowcast came back way way back in 2012. But I mean, what what was the point in time where you uh, called the other boys up and said, uh, "Let's get cracking, let's let's get it happening"? Well, we we've been uh, we've been seeing each other on and off ever since that time anyway, and we played a few shows as well. Um, the, sometimes the the live lineup. Is- uh, slightly different from the album lineup because obviously Shane is uh, is very busy with his band and Tony has been somewhat stuck in Florida because he has his work over there in the States. So. And obviously in stages it's not a cash grab. So mm. whatever we do when we play shows with in stages, it's basically, you know, to cover the cost and basically have fun with the boys. You know, that's, that's, that's the whole main purpose behind it. So hopefully with this, uh, release we can start cranking more and more touring and more shows and uh, yeah just gen- generally travel more and play more live maybe Australia should be on that, that list too brother oh hey. definitely I, I really hope so <laughs> and uh, you know I've been to Australia twice now with Dimu and uh, I really really love it there uh, uh, and I can't wait to come back uh, in one way or another so <laughs> oh, man. yeah look forward to that yeah yeah, it'd be uh, it'd be amazing. And of course, I mean, you mentioned you're you're busy outside the band. Shane's in a million bands. <laughs> um, you know, uh, the other boys are busy. Uh, you know, how how hard is it to to nail everyone down to to get things happening, like jamming and stuff like that? Is it difficult? Yeah, lo- it's it's kind of like a logistical challenge there, but um, and that's why we we have some uh, other guys stepping in whenever. The full band can play uh, or rehearse together, so I think that has worked out pretty good so far. Mm. And um, it's just normal when when everybody else has has a main priority that's not insidious disease. Uh, it's just the way it is, you know. But uh, I think with um, with this album, uh, and as far as I can tell, with the response and feedback so far, I think 
there's going to be a, a lot more uh, stuff for us to to put our teeth into, you know, and uh, I hope that we can tour uh, quite a lot for this release. Absolutely, man. Can you talk a, a bit about what's going on with Dimu right now? What, what are you guys up to behind yeah, the scenes? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, no, we, we are, we're pretty well underway into the beginning of the songwriting process for the for the next album. So things are going uh, pretty smooth, to be fair. Um, we have uh, separately, um, us in the band, we have so much ideas and material and we just bring everything to the to the demo pot so to speak and we stir around and then uh, you know stuff comes out <laughs> so it's like a meat grinder you know like okay we keep this we keep we scrap that meat because that's that's foul you know, you know? so it's a it's a pretty long process but it's yeah, a very really, uh fun process and there's never a shortage of uh of ideas or riffs it's it's more like a challenge to to uh, assemble it all and and again also there to shave off the fact that's not needed basically and uh yeah you know it feels feels really good and uh it's not going to take us uh, 10 years until the next album is out that's that's i can guarantee <laughs> awesome awesome what, what kind of direction are you seeing it headed for this one ah uh, well it's obviously uh, always strange to talk about it that early in this in the songwriting mm. process but uh, i feel like it might be a uh, a little bit more stripped down, and uh, that's probably not saying too much in Dimmu uh, sense, uh, you know, because we have so much of everything. But I feel like we're we're looking at maybe toning it down a little bit, especially on the orchestral side. Okay. So uh, I, people shouldn't be too surprised if they if they get a bit more stripped down version of, of Dimmu in on the next album. Man, well, whatever you guys are up to, uh, I'm keen to hear it. But do you, you know, you obviously love what you do with with all your projects. But are you missing putting the makeup on and and suiting up every night, or are you happy to just throw on the old battle jacket and get up there and play? Well, to, to be honest, I, I really miss uh, playing live, uh, both with Insidious and Dimmer. And uh, and you know, if that includes me putting on the makeup, so be it. You know, it's like. Uh, it's what we've done, and it's part of the band, it's a huge part of the visuals, and uh, and it it comes fairly easy for me personally to do that stuff, and it's it's um it's something that comes with it, you know, and I don't really think about it. It's just you know part of the ritual, basically. So uh, we yeah, I really miss playing shows and touring and traveling the world. I think a lot of bands are, are really going to appreciate that travel and stuff, you know, when it when it really kicks off again, hey. Because I know it can be yeah. a bit bit of a mission getting on that plane, early flights, and doing the whole thing, you know, you know. So uh, yeah, that's the thing, you know, especially for Dimmer in that sense, because we um we're not the typical plug and play band, you know, we're not like a three piece band with guitar, bass, and drums. Mm. And just you know, uh, we our backline in, in itself, even the the flying backline is, is quite huge. Uh, so. It's uh, it's not like something we can just turn around on our heels in the, in a matter of two days and like step in for another band that has cancelled. You know, it, it has to be planned really well, and there's a lot of expenses involved. So, uh, but uh, saying that, it's um, I really miss playing live, and uh, hopefully we can get back to uh, normality in not so distant future. Absolutely, brother. Absolutely, and uh, you know, not not a lot of people know it, but you did a guest spot on Metalocalypse uh, years ago. Man, I miss that show. Yeah. I miss that show, but I remember that, and it, it was awesome. How was that being part of that? Yeah, I, I remember we did. Uh, I think it was uh, yeah, Vortex and myself. We did some um, some overdub stuff for I think two episodes, if I'm not mistaken, and. Uh, um, we both played, you know, weird characters. I can't even remember the character now, but uh, I remember I was talking in in Norwegian in one of, or tried to talk Norwegian in one of them uh, with my dialect, my local Norwegian dialect, to make it, you know, sound really <laughs> out there and sound really weird. So uh, no, it's fun to do some some stuff that uh, that's a bit outside, you know. And we as a band has always been uh, about um, crossing barriers and uh, challenging the status quo in, in in extreme music, you know, we've gotten a lot of bullshit for that over the years. But then again, um, most of those people that, that has given us bullshit, they uh, 
they don't get to be on stage in front of uh, thousands of people and, and perform their own music. <laughs> That's so, right. Uh, you know, you know, um, I take huge pride in that, that we have um, paid our own way, so to speak. And uh, we haven't let anybody else um, um, make us change or or do anything that we we don't feel like doing. So, yeah. Damn right, man. No, that's 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 the right response. You know, they where, where's their <laughs> where's their touring and and uh, getting up there and playing thousands of people? Yeah, you have the yeah. right. Tell them to shut the fuck up. Kind <laughs> <laughs> of, it's been a pretty shitty year for a lot of people, but this year especially, I've been finding that uh, for creativity and metal releases as well from your peers, man, it's been incredible. Twenty twenty has been amazing for metal, especially. What what are you being? I totally agree with you, man. I totally agree with you. It's, it's been, um, I'm, I'm trying to make, um, a best of 20 list of, uh, by the end of the year, but so far I'd, it's way more than 20 releases, you know? <laughs> yeah. So it's, uh, yeah, it's been a really, really great, uh, year. Absolutely. What's, what's, uh, the top sort of two, three you've been cranking? Uh, well, I think, uh, the Catatone album is definitely up there. Yeah. Um, and then, then there's another Swedish band, which is more um, young uh, band called Ambush. They have a old school heavy metal sounding uh, expression, and it, it sounds really, really, really cool. And I've been cranking that quite a lot. So, uh, uh, and there's also a Norwegian uh, band that's been reformed in a way called Conception. I don't know if you heard about them, but it's more like a um, prog. Uh, Proggy mm. heavy band, uh, which uh, the singer used to sing in with Camelot, uh, oh, Roy yeah, Com. yeah, 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 yeah. And, and they have a new album out uh, called uh, "State of Deception," I think, and that's uh, that's been uh, a rotation on my vinyl player as well. So yeah, this, that's just to name a few. But um, this year is going to be difficult to choose uh, the top twenty. So uh, oh, no. might have to increase it to top thirty. <laughs> Yeah, I know, dude. It's been crazy. The new Napalm's really good. You mate Shane's band. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, like the new Imperial but Triumph. Uh, Shit. Yeah, yeah. And I got the, and the, um, Ulcerate's uh, new album. It's been cranking a lot here. Oh yeah. Um, so no, it's, it's uh, we're lucky to have so many uh, different killer releases this year, and uh, and it's inspirational just in itself, you know, to be able to listen to. Uh, artists that uh, mm. um, are just going about what they do and uh, and don't give a fuck basically just like yeah that's what it's that's, about uh, that's inspirational yeah man absolutely and uh, yeah. uh of course can we uh expect uh the the third uh insidious disease album around the corner too have you got you guys got tracks you're cooking up well the that's the thing you know since, uh, since we haven't <laughs> yeah <laughs> we haven't been uh busy touring this year i've been working on uh, a lot of new material and we're um we're well in the way with with writing uh, of the third insidious album so hopefully we can um record uh sometime next summer uh i've been talking to to russ russell about it who mixed and mastered um off the death he's up for doing everything uh, in his studio this this time and he's uh and he's just finishing rebuilding this new studio so that's something that we uh, look forward to for sure oh man i look forward to it if it's anything like uh uh the, the latest one after death man it's gonna it's gonna crush cool, cool. <laughs> awesome absolutely <laughs> awesome. bro absolutely <laughs> Well, uh, dude, it's been awesome hanging out on the show with you, and I definitely hope to see you and the boys down here in Australia once uh, all this COVID stuff fucks right off. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> of course, the new Insidious Disease album, After Death, is out on October 30 through Nuclear Blast. Uh, brother, take care and uh, stay safe and be good and drink all the beers and listen to all the metal. Well, for sure, and same to you, man. Thanks a lot.